What's going on, you guys? Before we get into today's video, please be aware that there is going to be a massive amount of spoilers in both the footage that you are going to see throughout this video and in the contents of the review itself. Please be advised that I will be going into heavy spoiler sections within this review. So if you have not played Spider-Man 2 yet, please either watch a playthrough or play through it yourself before watching this review if you care about spoilers. If you don't really care too much about spoilers, enjoy the video. The story of Spider-Man 2 is an ever-changing one of growth, disappointment, and sometimes self-loathing for the things that are out of the character's control. The narrative design and the flow of slash how the characters move throughout this game are brilliantly executed. There's so much life that's breathed into Spider-Man 2, making an already rich story even more bountiful in how it's presented to new fans of the Spider-Verse. The way Venom consumes Peter and Harry to the point of self-isolation, abusing their mentality and everyone around them is emotionally jarring and makes the experience of the game more immersive and satisfying. What's going on, you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here, and welcome back to the channel. In today's review, I'm going to be diving into Spider-Man 2. I'd like to point out the rarity in the fact that I'm actually recording during the day time for this video. Yes, I know. Applause. Thank you so much. My playtime for Spider-Man 2 sat at 29 hours for mainlining the story and doing a few side quests. For anyone looking for a not so long but immersive game, this one hits everything in the right way. It wasn't too long. It wasn't too short either. Spider-Man 2 executed the length of a game perfectly without overstaying its welcome, making the story meaningful and impactful. Sometimes a story is short, sometimes it's longer, and it's all about how the piece of media, in this instance, a game is approached. Peter and Miles have this big brother, little brother relationship and the type of dynamic that brought this electric energy to the game. The banter back and forth and the serious conversations that were written so well brought a sense of realism to the game that I thoroughly enjoyed. Some games make serious moments a way to bring a form of comic relief to the mix. While that's not a bad thing when it's done right, I don't feel as if too many games just sit in sorrow or frustration that's being had in the moment. Spider-Man 2 does a great job at really sitting with the emotions that Peter, Miles, or MJ are feeling at the moment, and then understanding them so they can continue on with what they need to do. It is healthy, and I am so glad that these characters were written in a way that conveys healthy coping mechanisms. While yes, being Spider-Man isn't realistic, being a healthy person is. So it's nice that a game is showcasing that. When it comes to Venom, however, healthy coping strategies and self-actualizations are the complete opposite of how the symbiotic parasite runs. Spider-Man going from almost dying to becoming the villain for part of the story wasn't on my bingo card for the game and yet here we are. Slowly starts to lose himself over time to Venom, making the story go from a nice calm to being on the edge of my seat with every chapter. Even the evolution of Lee helping Miles and then turning himself into the police wasn't the character twist I expected. Each plot line, each way the story was navigated was done in a precise and well-crafted manner, making each character carry meaning and weight in the story. The mechanics of this game surpassed that of Spider-Man 2018 and Miles Morales. They were so much smoother in this title. They added on to what made the mechanics already good and made it even better. When I played through the game, I could use the controller in new and immersive ways. I could tilt to aim where I wanted the water soaker to be pointed at or when I was playing basketball. It was amazing to see how far tech for the controllers has come. It makes me endlessly excited to see where it's headed in the future. Another thing that made me really impressed and happy was the parrying in this game. It's so satisfying to hit each time and rather easy to do depending on the difficulty mode you have set. There's so many things about the mechanics of this game that make it just pure fun and such a joy to go through. So if you love smooth control work, mechanics that run like butter, and a new way to get yourself immersed into a game, you will enjoy Spider-Man 2. I have no doubt about it. This game hits on so many things that created a sense of emotion, immersion, and questioning if really Peter would make it out or if Venom would take him over entirely. The change in audio and how the music was approached by the end of the game was an instant but not jarring. The game becomes more solemn and heartbreaking to match where the player is emotionally, and I think that level of understanding your audience is something special. Another thing that added to the game was the incorporation of ASL. American Sign Language. Haley Cooper was first introduced in Spider-Man Miles Morales and brought back in Spider-Man 2. I'm so happy to see that she has more of a prominent role in the second game. Her character adds a level of calmness to the storm that is Miles's life. Not only that, but the boss battles are just genuinely 
good. Like they surprised me with how good they are with Mr. Negative and Venom being my two favorites. A lot of them had different movesets that made each boss experience unique and to a degree, a challenge as well. The thing in this game that I would negatively critique was the amount of common enemies that had the same wash, rinse, repeat fights. Variants of enemy types were really great, but the way they were fought would get very repetitive. By the time the game ended, my heart sank, my eyes welled up, and the game ended with a new story to, hopefully, grace our collection soon. That was it for my review on Spider-Man 2. I enjoyed this game so much, and I hope that you guys do too whenever you get a chance to play it. If you guys have played it, let's discuss it down in the comments below. I can't wait to read your thoughts. But if you guys like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell down below. May you find your worth in the waking world, dear hunter. Stay casually nerdy, and I will see you all in the next video. Umbasa.